Hey guys, some of you are going to hate me for doing this build order tutorial, but then some of you are going to love me because it's going to get you some free wins. This is the proxy Stargate build of PVT shown to us by the one only Max Pax, who was uh, definitely very good at the build. So let's start off by not building a probe. Do not build your first probe and then grab a 12 pylon. Now you can build your probes. And then get a 13 gateway. Go back to building probes. Chrono the Nexus. Get an assimilator from 15. And your second assimilator on 16. Send probe to the proxy location. Now this should be someplace around their ramp where your void ray can abuse the terrain. Send your first two probes, sorry, two probes into your first gas and then a probe, two probes into your second gas, get an 18 cybernetic core and get a zealot. So that's two probes in each assimilator. Now your proxy probe should be placing down a proxy pylon. Go ahead and fill up your first gas, three out of three. And pay attention to where Max Pax puts his proxies on this map. Get your proxy stargate should be around 150 on the timer and then get an Adept and Chrono it. If it feels like you're skipping pro production commonly, it's because you are. Whenever you can fit one in. Second Adept. No probes, no probes. Get a pylon in a more forward position and start placing down shield batteries. Still not building any probes right now because you need to build a void ray as soon as possible. So go ahead and build it and chrono it. And then you need to build a shield battery ASAP. So build that in a forward position. And then you can go back to saturating your main. And continue hopping forward with the pylons. No, not too many. Waters are expensive, but if you can get closer, then get closer. Second void ray. At this point, you should be fully saturated back at home, so you should be focusing entirely on the attack. Which includes microing the void ray. Just make sure to have it in close position to the shield batteries. And a third void ray, and then another void ray, and more shield batteries. You get the picture. And that's kind of what you do. Um, you do start up a warp gate around this time. Max Pack's also got a shield battery back at home in case the Reaper went across. But it did not. And then you uh, hopefully are killing the Terran by now. So let's go into the build discussion. As that is the extent of the build, anything that happens after that is going to be, um, you know, you, you have to figure that one out. <laughs> so the strength of the build, it is very cheesy, so it wins if it's not scouted a lot of the time. And even if it is scouted, it wins. Difficult to hold, even if scouted. Exactly what I just said. Even if they scout it from the get-go, a lot of people mishandle this and then rage at you. So that leads into the fun aspect. I'm putting it as a strength. It's fun. If you really just... Uh, dig into the sense of being an evil mastermind villain, then it's really fun. 
If you are a Terran who's trying out this build as a Protoss, then prepare to feel bad about yourself and all the Terrans that you kill. But it is definitely fun. So the weaknesses, it is better on some maps than others. So the position that we saw Max Packs take on that map, uh, the idea is that you can put your shield batteries kind of close to the Terran's main ramp. So you get on top of their production at the very least their supply depots, right? Because that's how Terrans build. And then the Void Ray can easily go back to the shield battery while also being in close proximity to the Terran's production. Some of the other maps out there don't necessarily, uh, you know, cater to this. Like some of the newer maps, for instance, that came out recently aren't going to have a great place to put it. But generally, you can do this on any map, but you're, the goal is to try and hit that main base, right? So if you can't have easy access to the main base, then it's going to be a bit more difficult to execute. So it's difficult to make work against one base Terrans. Um, this is because they're going to have a really fast factory. Their unit count might still be kind of low, but the factory is producing that cyclone, especially if they scout you and the one basing, right? Uh, they're producing that cyclone a lot faster. So it's not going to be as much of the early damage to the marine count or like having the SCVs panic and then the cyclone pops. And then they're also going to have faster access to a starport. And if they're able to get both Cyclones and Vikings, then you're going to have trouble, depending on how fast that happens. Doesn't mean that you can't win, but a lot of the power behind this is actually keeping the opponent's unit count low. Void Rays actually really suck against like 12 plus Marines. <laughs> like they, they're actually surprisingly bad. Um, and that's also why they need the shield batteries, right? So the positioning is really important. And then, uh, of course, it's cheesy, so that's also a weakness. It'll get you a couple of free wins, and then it'll get you a couple of free losses. You're gonna have someone find your proxy pylon and then kill it, and you're gonna go, I don't know what to do. And you can try and make it work by just proxying elsewhere later on. Max Pax has done that, and it is one. But yeah, occasionally you gotta admit that you're just going to lose some really silly games, and then be prepared to tap out. All right, let's move on to the tips and tricks. So the opener here is a little more uh, complicated as you, know, you are stopping probe production when in a lot of other builds, you're going to be consistently building probes, but there's a lot of reasons for that. So the first time you're going to notice the, the stopping probe, right, is by building a faster gateway, which gives you a faster 7x core, faster stargate, you get the picture. You also get a zealot really early on, which you don't do in a lot of other macro builds. The job of this Zealot and the Adepts that follow up is to, one, guard the Pylon and Stargate. So if they find your proxy, if you can get units across the map, they can save it. And then two, it's to mess up the Terran. So if you can find their command center building in the natural, which if they're not scouting you, they're going to have. You get a very quick and easy cancel on that, or they try and save it and then realize they can't. They've already spent too much time investing into it, and they're already behind. Um, if you force them to repair their supply depots, that's already something that they have to think about doing, which might make them forget other things, because unless we're talking about the pros, you know, and I think that was Clem as the Terran in that specific replay, a lot of people, Grandmaster and below, are going to lose games against cheeses because they just they can't hold all the limes you know like they just they just drop everything and focus on one thing and then forget to macro or forget to compensate for the next part of the build so you're going to try and, and apply pressure a little bit of pressure from the get-go and that's also why a one base terran is going to find a little more success against you is because they don't have to worry about the mad scramble to protect their natural they just are going to hold up in their main base and go okay yeah i'm waiting for the stargate the real power is in the shield batteries. Uh, the closer the shield batteries to the Terran production, the better. So you kind of have to be a little bit careful about this. Where Max Pax did his, for instance, so he proxied the Stargate kind of far away, uh, well, relatively far away, and then that saved him from maybe getting scouted, and then his Void Ray does come out. It flies over the shield battery that he positioned much closer. You don't want to just position everything so close to the Terran's ramp that they literally see you. That's that's not good. <laughs> so they, you know, their supply depots do have a certain vision range. Don't put your pylon or your shield batteries there unless you know you can protect them. But if you can, then that is ideal. 
the closer the shield batteries are to the uh, the edge of the Terran's base, right? The more that your Void Array has the flexibility to deep dive into their base on top of their factory and starport production, and then safely make it back to the shield batteries. Because the Void Rays themselves, again, are not that impressive, really. It's the combination of the Void Rays and the shield batteries. Learn how to cancel micro the Void Ray prismatic alignment. So apparently people don't know this is possible, so maybe you're learning something here today. But you can actually press cancel on the Void Rays when they're prismatically aligned. Now that is going to restart the cooldown, and it's going to be a while before you can prismatically align again. So there's some benefit to just keeping it going if you know there's going to be a re-engagement happening soon. But it's usually better to cancel that, to learn how to cancel it. Uh, very, very quickly if you're under threat from like a cyclone, for instance. If you don't get the cyclone, if the Void Ray isn't attacking the cyclone, it's clearly going to get out of range. You're going to need to cancel that prismatic alignment and run back to the shield battery. Otherwise, your Void Ray will die. So it does require a little bit of micro. I know some Terrans out there are going to say, no, it doesn't. It's the easiest build in the world and it sucks. It's stupid. But uh, no, it actually does require a bit of micro and a bit of, of practice, you know, to decide exactly when to turn around, when to push the issue, all that good stuff. And then finally, I do want to reiterate that there are probe production gaps in this build. So you're going to have to pay attention to the actual uh, video of this one, perhaps a little bit to really see where and when it's paused. But the actual uh, numbers, the supply that I put in these builds are accurate. So you can also try and follow along audibly and just be like, oh, okay, I didn't not to make a probe there. I should have gotten an adept one probe earlier. But it is a little bit trickier because of that. So that should do it for the tips and tricks. I hope you guys enjoy using this build. It's uh it's it's that's it's gonna get you a lot of hate. Um and as I said, if you just kind of revel in the idea of being an evil mad scientist, then that's enjoyable. But if you're going to feel bad about taking people's ladder points, well then maybe you don't use this build but I think you should. It's uh, it's fun, it's kind of silly, it's definitely a different way to play, and I mean, it's good It's good content. I'll tell you what, salty people on YouTube get to the views. And with that all said and done, if you guys want to check out this in, in practice or ask me any more questions, uh, more specifically about the build or just general StarCraft 2 stuff, if you're new to StarCraft 2 and you're like, I don't even know what supply means, then check out the newbie friendly streams that I do on Friday just ask questions and get help so that's twitch.tv slash zombie grub and that'll do it guys thanks for watching continue playing some good starcraft and i will see you next week for another build order tutorial